Hi and welcome. Today this is another video in my series about fractions and today we are concentrating on comparing fractions. Now you may find yourself in an exam or test situation where you do or don't have access to a calculator uh, so for that reason we're going to look at two different methods we can use to compare the fractions with or without calculator. Just before we start looking at fractions though, there are a couple of symbols that I'd like to talk about just to make sure we are writing our answers down correctly. I'm sure everybody is familiar with the equal sign, but today we are going to use this symbol and its opposite, which is this symbol. Now, the middle one here means smaller than. So if I write the number four there, I can say that it is smaller than six. Similar, the one at the bottom here is just the opposite way around. It's larger than. So I can say that eight is larger than two. This is useful because when we give an answer to questions when we're comparing fractions, this is the simplest way to do it. Let's also have a quick look at the more straightforward scenario when you are asked to look at a fraction, let's say three sevenths, and decide whether or not it is smaller or larger than five sevenths. You might consider this an obvious one and indeed because we are working in sevenths on both these fractions all we simply have to do is compare the top number here we've got three of them there we've got five of them so this would be the largest fraction and our answer would look like that three sevenths is smaller than five sevenths so let's have a look at a more common scenario and typically a question may give you a fraction like three-fifths and let's say another fraction of five-sevenths. And the question may be very simple. It simply says which of these two fractions is the largest. The problem we have here is that one fraction is in fifths and the other fraction is in sevenths. So it's not so obvious as to which we're going to choose. The way we do this, and I'm assuming at this point that we don't have a calculator, is to find equivalent fractions for these two. But We need to find a set of equivalent fractions where the bottom number becomes the same. Now, if you're not sure about equivalent fractions, please hit the subscribe button on my channel and have a look for my video which talks about equivalents. Now, the nice thing here is that there is a method that helps us to do this more quickly. And stage one is we look at the two bottom numbers and we multiply them together. So five times seven is 35. So what I want to end up with are two fractions that both have 35 on the bottom, like that. Now, we have to consider using the rules of equivalence what we have just done. The number five here, we just multiplied that by the seven. Using the rule of equivalent fractions, whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So that has to be multiplied by seven. So three times seven is 21. Therefore, the 21 goes there. So this bottom fraction, 21 over 35, is an equivalent to 3 over 5. We've done the same multiplication to the top and the bottom. We now do exactly the same to the right-hand side fraction. So what did we do originally with the 7? Well, we multiplied it by 5. So we have to multiply the top one by 5. In this case, 5 times 5 is 25. And again, we've created an equivalent fraction to 5 over 7. What we've achieved here, by finding equivalents of the two top fractions, whereby 
the bottom number is now the same, we can make a straightforward comparison between them. Because on this side, on the left, we have 21 over 35. On the right, we have 25 over 35. Therefore, the right hand side is the largest. Here we have another two fractions. So this is a second example. Let's try this again. We have sixths and we have ninths. Therefore, at this point, we cannot make a straightforward comparison. So the first thing we do is six times nine. Nine sixes are 54. Therefore, I'm going to end up here with two fractions. Both have 54 on the bottom. Looking at the rules of equivalence, the six, we just multiply that by the nine. So the top, we also have to multiply by the nine. And nine fours, 36. That and that are equivalents. Look at the nine. What have we done with the nine? Well, we multiplied it by the six. So on the top here, we have to multiply the seven by six. That is your equivalence law. 7 times 6, 42. Now again, we've got two fractions. They've both got 54 on the bottom. So all we have to do now is compare the top two numbers. 42 is larger than 36. So the symbol we put, 36 over 54, is smaller than 42 over 54. Now, up to this point, I've been assuming that you didn't have a calculator to help you make these comparisons. And in fact, in some exam situations now, that might be the case. But if you do, there is another option for comparing fractions. I've rewritten the two fractions that we used in our first example. And in fact, if you look at 3 over 5, another way of looking at this is to call it 3 divided by 5. And in fact, that is a function that you can perform with a fraction. If you take a calculator and you take 3 divided by 5, you will get the answer 0 0.6. Now, what you have done here is converted it from a fraction to a decimal. And uh, again, if you'd like more detail on that, I do have a video covering conversions. 3 divided by 5 is 0 0.6, and 5 divided by 7 actually comes out on a calculator at 0.714285, and in fact the number does continue. What is important is if we start making a straight comparison here, this decimal starts 0 0.6, whereas this one, 0 0.6. 7. Therefore, this one is the largest. Let's do the same for the second two fractions that we used earlier. 4 divided by 6. Well, 4 divided by 6 comes out at 0 0.666, and in fact that goes on forever. That's quite common with a decimal. 7 divided by 9 turns out at 0 0.777, and again goes on forever. Therefore, compare the two decimals, 0 0.6 something, 0 0.7 something, that one is the largest. So there we have two different ways of comparing fractions. Uh, you can use either depending on your own preference, or as I mentioned earlier, you may be forced into one or the other depending on whether you have access to that calculator. I do have another video which looks at a similar topic because something else we're going to have to concentrate on is comparing fractions, decimals, and also percentages. You'll find that on my channel if you want to hit the subscribe button. And I hope that's been of use to you today. Thank you.